Our next guest today on uh, Community Focus on Washington County is Jeremy Harden, who uh, was the recipient of the Chamber of Commerce Award as the Agriculture Leader of the Year. Yes, ma'am. And his office, Farm Bureau, mm -hmm. uh, received the Business Award. Chamber Business of Chamber the Year. Chamber Business of the Year. Yes. Congratulations, Thank Jeremy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Um, so tell me a little bit about this, Jeremy, why you received those awards. Well, truthfully, I don't know because the people that voted for me, I don't know who it was, but I do appreciate that. Um, I do a lot in the community. I try to do a lot in the community, volunteer work uh, with the Cattlemen's Association. Um, I also do a lot through, uh, of course, I try to, with our church. Um, and then one of the biggest things that um, I try to stay involved in is, of course, through my office, through the Farm Bureau and the Farm Bureau Federation. And kind of a chance to tell the story there, a lot of people don't realize that there's a different entity, I guess you would call it, than just the insurance company. Uh, you have the Farm Bureau Federation, which is where you pay your membership dues every year and we're a member organization. And then that organization, um, the Farm Bureau Federation, has people in Frankfurt to look out for the farmers and look out for the agriculture, uh, soil conservation, and other things in the community and across the state. So the Farm Bureau Federation has 425,000 members across the state of Kentucky. Every county has their own Washington County Farm Bureau or Nelson County Farm Bureau Federation. We have our own board of directors here and we deal with topics locally. Uh, one of the things a few years ago we got kind of really involved in was the dead animal removal in the county. Um, we were having trouble when uh, Nation Brothers was the company that was picking up dead animals for um, farmers and people in the community. They kind of pulled out, um, not really pulled out, but the prices got to where we couldn't support them and use that as an alternative, as a viable source to remove dead animals. So Farm Bureau kind of got in there, soil conservation, all of us stepped in and um, as most of you may know now, we have the composting facility in the county, and the county picks up those dead animals. So that was just one topic. Uh, every year we submit a list of priorities to our state office, and it has county priorities, state priorities, and federal priorities. Um, you know, some of the federal priorities that we have submitted here that's gone to the state are maybe uh, more lending opportunities for young farmers so that we can get younger farmers involved in agriculture. So I try to stay really involved with our Farm Bureau Federation through my office and uh, really support that because I'm a farmer also on the side and, and, and the Farm Bureau is my other business. So uh, in any way I can help in the community, I try to do it if I can and still balance my home life and keep my family as first priority. <laughs> I know that's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as uh, we were discussing, you are a farmer, and so you received the Agricultural Leader of the Year. And what do you suppose, uh, of course I know you are very active in the community. You've been active with the Chamber and um, the Sorghum Festival and um, uh, probably in your church. I'm not sure what all, Jeremy. Uh, and uh, as the Agriculture Leader of the Year, would would that be for um, some of your farming um, involvement techniques, or you well, you say you farm how many? You farm a lot of acres. It sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I'm a partner now. Uh, we've got um, I've got another guy that farms with me, and uh, he has a full-time job and a family of his own. But uh, we went to school together, college, and we've run about 150 to 60 mama cows and all total we run over probably 600 acres of ground counting what we pasture, what we cut for alfalfa hay and we sell hay to horse farms and dairies and other places like that. Um, I think the Ag Leader of the Year in my opinion um, when it comes to Ag Leader of the Year is more from the involvement with the Federation, the Farm Bureau Federation, mm -hmm. the uh, Cattlemen's Association <coughs> where I do that. Right. Uh, I was on the fair board in years past. I'm off that board now. Um, so, yeah. you know, I think the involvement is more what 
what, what's kind of got people that they voted for me for the Ag mm -hmm. Leader of the Year. Well, I know that if, um, if the Cattlemen's Association is doing anything or cooking, you're always there. I'm the cooking <laughs> chairman, so if there's you a are festival, the cooking chairman. I'm the chairman okay. that puts together the crews. Okay. Mostly, uh, do all the ordering and try to uh, uh, get everything lined up, and make sure the food booth is taken care of and set up. So yeah, that's been my job for two years. This will be my third year I've done mm -hmm. that, and, yeah. and I enjoy doing it. I mean, it's fun. Uh, you know, you get to uh, get your product out there. You know, support the beef by selling the ribeye steaks and the burgers and uh, we're trying to support local farmers by using local hamburgers. Uh, we get most of our burgers from two or three local sources, um, St. Catherine Farms, uh, Rising Sun Beefs are two of our main suppliers mm -hmm. um, for our hamburger patties. So we try to keep as much local as we can there mm -hmm. and uh, you know make some money for the cattlemen's and then that money gets put back in. We do scholarships for kids. Um, you know, we donate to 4-H and FFA. We try to be real active with the FFA and help them. And uh, we take a trip every year. I actually just finished a trip committee meeting at lunch today. That's where I was at from 12 to 1. We were planning our trip for our cattlemen's this fall. And where's that going to be? Uh, we're looking at going to the western part of Kentucky, maybe down through. Uh, we're going to stay in Paducah for two nights, uh, visit Murray State, uh, visit the Princeton Research Center. Uh, there's a... Um, Black Hawk Beef, um, a high-end beef producer down that way that's selling to a lot of restaurants, a lot of high-end restaurants. We're going to visit them. Mm -hmm. um, looking at going to maybe a winery in the Paducah area and then trying to run over to Sykeston, Missouri and hit Lambert's Cafe for supper one night. It'll be a three-day trip, leave on mm -hmm. a Thursday morning and return on Saturday early evening. And you'll probably <coughs> tour a farm while you're... Two or, okay. Well, two or several farms, some intensive grazing operations, um, and we try to keep some fun stuff too because a lot of the guys take their spouses and, you know, get a shopping mall in there if we can or <laughs> the winery. We ladies you need know, a shopping mall, Jim. You get tired of seeing cows and tractors <laughs> for three days, so. We'll try now, I know it. you don't. I don't. You could look yeah. at them all the time. We, exactly. I had a discussion uh, with Sister uh, Claire about, uh, she said it was amazing to her. She was sitting maybe in Hardy's or somewhere, and uh, these farmers were having a conversation about this tractor. She goes, they went on about that tractor for an over an hour <laughs> about all the things that tractor could do. Yep. <laughs> so I know that's the kind of conversation you like. <laughs> when, it, when it's in your blood, it's in your blood, and that's, you know, that's my thing. Uh, I was born and raised in Willisburg on the farm. That's all I've ever known. I was in 4-H and FFA, showed horses, showed cattle. Not didn't show cattle, showed sheep and horses. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't get it out of my blood. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's why I'm still farming mm -hmm. and working at Farm Bureau. Right, right. Well, I know I do know that I've seen, uh, let's see, how old are your children? You have three? I've got three daughters. i got Ava, I'll be 10 in May. I've got Annalise is the middle, and she is now eight. And then I got the baby, which was four in November, and that's Adlin. Oh, all so A's. They're all dancers. Oh. So we spend a lot of time at the dance studio and dance competitions, and <laughs> I wouldn't take a million dollars for none of it. Yeah. So. Well, I've seen them with you at the Cattleman's uh, booth, too. They love to help at the Cattleman's booth. Every time they know Daddy's going to cook, and can they go help? Uh -huh. They like the package. and and help serve drinks and whatever they can do. So they do like that, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Yep. Do they participate on the farm? Um, uh, the 10-year-old does not. She's, uh, her nine going on 10, she's she's a, she's a dancer. She's a queen. The eight-year-old, <laughs> she loves to go with daddy on the farm. She don't mind to get dirty. Uh, and then she likes to dress up and be the queen for a little while at a time too. So she's both. And the four-year-old, She's just wild. She does whatever. <laughs> She's got her <laughs> She's own. She's not sure yet. No. She's got her own agenda. <laughs> She's got her own agenda. So we'll <laughs> see how she comes along. Well, and now your wife, um, um, but gosh, my mind's gone blind. Delana. Uh, D uh, Delana is a teacher at um, uh, North, North Washington. North Washington, kindergarten teacher. Yeah. So she's got children all day long. She's got kids all day long and <laughs> loves, she loves what she does and the kids love her. It's pretty amazing to see the, to go out there and see the kids and they, every one of them wants a hug and, right. and uh, she touches every one of them's life when she walks through there. So mm -hmm. pretty neat. 
Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, that's one of the most important jobs in the world. It is. And, uh, of course, uh, Delaney, I never, I guess because she is out in North Washington, I don't see her uh, very much. But, uh, you know, she was in school with Blair, so, mm -hmm. and they, um, uh, it's just amazing to see you all, and you and you too, Jeremy, all grown up. And, and I'm just glad that we've got people like you in the community that are staying here in Washington County and, uh, and uh, giving back to your community. And, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons you were, received that award uh, as well is because of your, uh, your involvement in giving back to the community and trying to make Washington County a better place to live. And, you know, uh, as you said, giving, uh, 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 trying to use all local beef and things. I didn't even realize you all did that. And uh, uh, Rising uh, Sun's Beef, I've uh, featured them on here because they won an award last year right. at the Chamber Banquet. And then um, St. Catherine Farms, I've been trying to get Danny on the, on the program, Danny Spalding, who's in charge of their farm because and it, it's important that we support you know uh, our local yes. uh, businesses our local farmers because that money stays in our community that way right yeah a lot of the the projects that go on in the community and uh, Rick Greenwald always talks about this it's interesting how many times a dollar turns over and you know there's there's some programs through the uh, tobacco buyout where you can get some cost share money where if you spend 5000 you can get 2500 back or different different programs at different levels but what people don't realize is that 2500 is a, has a multiplier of 6 so if i get approved to do a project on the farm just say put fencing in well i go and i buy the fence at Clements Ag Supply and then i hire a fencing crew to put it up and then they have to pay you know Clements Ag Supply has to pay his workers. The fence and crest pay his workers. So, so that money it multiplies by six right here in the community if you keep it here and don't go outside and buy stuff. You know, there's things we have to go outside and buy, but if you can buy it local and support your community, it, it does everybody good. Right. That's exactly right. And um, then, then you, you. Um, of course, they'd pay taxes on that too, exactly. which the city and the county did. Exactly. <laughs> that part which of that, helps maintain our roads. That's part of that multiplier you, by six. That's exactly right. Yep. So that gives us uh, a, a good road out to Pat Clements' store and a good yep. road out to your house. That's right. And uh, things like that. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. So, well, and then um, uh, your board. Uh, how many people on your board? They're all Washington Countyans. They're all Washington County. Um, I'm trying to think if we've got 10, 9, 10, 11 board members. I can't remember exactly. I could count them up, but we got around 10 board members. Uh, we try to do farmers from different parts of the of the county. You know, make sure we got somebody in the Michael area, the Willisburg area, St. Rose, Frederick Town, just to make sure we've got a representation all across the county, uh, representing all the members. On mm -hmm. our board of directors, there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We meet the first Monday night of the month and conduct the business of whatever may be coming up. Uh, we do a lot of we got a scholarship program that we started. Uh, I know it's been going on five or six years. We give fifteen hundred dollars worth of scholarships away every year through this county. Uh, plus, the state has several thousand dollars in scholarships, but the ones that we do here in the county are strictly for Washington County High School seniors or um, college, as long as you're from Washington County and you have a membership with Farm Bureau. So if your mom or dad is a Farm Bureau member and you're a senior in school, you are eligible to apply for those scholarships. Uh, and one is reserved specifically for someone that is has an emphasis in agriculture as their major. The other two are open to anybody. Mm -hmm. And we base it on you know, there's a criteria they're sent out and scored, but one of the things that we put a lot of points on is financial need. Because one thing that I always recognize is a lot of times a, a kid may or a student may be the smartest in the class, but they got a free ride because they're, they've got, you know, all these other scholarships because of their grades. Well, the guy that's got decent grades 
not getting a lot of scholarships, not getting any free rides anywhere, he needs that scholarship as bad or she needs that scholarship as bad or more than so a lot of the scholarships are based on grade point averages and involvement and we put a lot of emphasis on financial need for mm -hmm. ours so that's just kind of a neat thing that I think that the board decided when we started this years ago and we said well, what do we want to look at well let's let's get it to some kids that need the money <clears throat> that's great that's so, great and do and they just need their parents just need to be Farm Bureau members and to be a member you just have you have your insurance with you is that correct you don't have to have insurance to be a member but you have to have a membership to have insurance uh -huh. so if you have insurance with us then you know you're a member uh -huh. uh, but we do have several members in the county that uh, maybe they've had insurance at another company for 30 40 years but they see the importance of farm bureau and the federation and what they're doing for farmers they come in every year and they give me a $25 membership fee and they say, I still want to be a member of Farm Bureau even though I don't have my insurance with you right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's... Uh, and and <laughs> so uh, with their membership, what do they, what what does that include with their membership? To come to the meetings or... Well, with your membership, um, basically you have the Federation and then under the Federation you have the insurance company. So, like I said, in order to have insurance, you have to be a member. Right. Because basically when you're a member, you have member benefits. And the number one member benefit is access to the insurance. Right. We have discounts at state parks. We have uh, discounts for hearing aids. Um, one of the free things, if you're a member, you have automatic um, identity theft protection. If your identity is stolen, uh, we get you in contact with a service and they will pay farm bureau will pay 100 percent of the fee to get you restored back then if you want to sign up for a monthly monitoring with them you can but we will fit the bill to get a specialist to get you back where you were before your identity was stolen if you're a member uh, we have discounts on alarms uh, state parks lots of hotels you know, can get discounts rental car discounts so there's a there's a list of member services that you wow. can do but the number one is the insurance that, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have an annual meeting every year in November, October. I think it's in October. Uh, and if you're a member, you're invited to that annual meeting free of charge. We have a good meal. And the first hundred people that sign up for that, you know, get mm -hmm. to come to the, to the membership meal. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be a farmer. You don't have to be a farmer. No, nope. that's a lot of people think, well, I don't have a farm. You can have a house in town. You can have one car, no home. Or like you see, you don't even have to have insurance to be a Farm Bureau member. You can just come in and get a membership and be a member of the organization. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting information, yep. Jeremy. I did not know all that. That's good to know. So, well, I appreciate you being here today. And uh, I want to congratulate you on your award. Well deserved. And thank you for all you do for this community. Thank you for having me. <laughs>